Welcome to Creative Cooking. Today we're going to make a delicious appetizer with Swedish meatballs and puff pastry. And I think you're going to like it a lot. And what we have here is a meatloaf mix, which is a mix of ground beef, pork, and veal. If you don't want to use veal, just try mixing some ground pork and some ground beef, and it works out just as well. Now I'm using a recipe here that's very, very basic, and that's based on some research that I did from people who live in Sweden. They don't put onions or parsley in their meatballs. They like it with just salt and pepper. So I'm gonna to try to stay true to that, but I am gonna add one little thing to this, um, and that is allspice, just a quarter teaspoon of allspice. I find that it gives it a nice flavor and it complements the rest of the sauce, which also has some allspice in it, but we'll get into that later. And I like to mix this with the tines of a fork. One thing you don't want to do with meatballs is to compress the meat too much. You want to keep it kind of loose. So I'll usually add the eggs up front because they're nice and wet and then add the breadcrumbs. Well, you might notice that I'm using fresh breadcrumbs and uh, just want to show you how I do it. When I get to the end of a loaf of bread, this is like an Italian bread. I like using it to make breadcrumbs for meatloaf, meatballs, or in a gratin. And I'll usually cut up the, the outside of the bread first, the crust, because it takes a little bit longer to process. Of course, I'm gonna speed this up for you, but you wanna put them in there, give them a little head start before we put the rest of the, the bread in there, right? And you process that until it reaches a consistency that you like. These are nice, fresh breadcrumbs of a decent size, and you can also use them for gratins. Very good stuff. And you mix them in. But I intentionally didn't make enough because I wanted to show you the other way I do it. These are panko breadcrumbs, but I don't put them straight in. I like to soak them with a little bit of milk. Some people say, well, soak them and then squeeze out the excess. Well, you don't have to do that. Just, um, you know, put enough in there to moisten them. Let them sit for a few minutes and go ahead and add it to your mix. All right, because that's going to help you with moisture. And remember that the breadcrumbs is one of the things that helps the meatballs to remain tender because you didn't compress the meat. And that's precisely why I like to use the tines of a fork to do all the mixing. Then to measure them, I always use a sorbet scoop. It's just the right size. And if you measure it off scant, every one of your meatballs is gonna come out perfect. They're perfect little bite-sized meatballs and they're perfect for this little appetizer here. You see, they're beautiful. And out of about a 1.2 package of meat, I ended up with about 32 meatballs. You can pause here and count them if you want to, but I didn't. And when I cooked them, I'd rather not do it in the oven. Here I'm using my large non-stick skillet with the vertical sides. And what I want to do is brown them. I want to get a nice browning on them. You see? Oh, beautiful. Oh, they look gorgeous. Good enough to eat already. But more importantly, I want that fond on the bottom because that is going to be part of our sauce. It's going to make it even more flavorful than if you did it in the oven. I'm deglazing with one and a half cups of beef broth and that was made using about a teaspoon and a half of um, the granulated bullion. And bear in mind that that granulated bullion is usually seasoned with salt. So you'll notice I'm not putting any salt in here. But I am going to add about a quarter teaspoon of Jamaican allspice, or just allspice, and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. You can probably scale back a little bit on the nutmeg because it's pretty strong, but I like it that way. It's delicious. And of course, we're going to throw in some freshly ground black pepper. And that's about it for the seasonings, at this point in time anyway. Now we're going to turn it into a cream sauce. And what I have is a little bit of heavy cream that's left over from a different recipe. Not quite enough, but I wanted to try to see if it would be okay with that. I do suggest that you use the heavy cream to get that richness that we're shooting for with this sauce. You could use light cream, but I do suggest the heavy cream. And most people would probably uh, reduce the salt at this point, but I'm not going to reduce it. In fact, it feels like it should have a little more seasoning, so I'm going to add a little bit more allspice. And that really is optional for you 
but I like the allspice, so I put it in. It's my recipe, I can do that. But I have to add a little more cream. So I opened up another container, not to worry, I have other uses for it. I wanna make sure that the gravy in here is nice, thick, and rich. And while I would ordinarily thicken it by reduction, I don't wanna lose volume, so I'm using some potato starch and water to create the thickening agent. And I prefer to use the potato starch because it doesn't break down like cornstarch does. And you certainly don't want to use flour unless you make a roux. So this is the best way to do it. It thickens on contact and you can control the exact thickness of the sauce as you go. And at this point, the sauce is good enough for a meal to put over mashed potatoes. Or in my case, I like to use these egg noodles. <laughs> egg noodles are the way to go in my opinion. And that's what it looks like. But this is about the tarts. So we're gonna go ahead and butter up our little mini loaf pan. I have a couple of them, but I'm only making 12 today. And what I like to do with the puff pastry is just coat each side with a little bit of flour because I wanna roll it out. Not that you need to roll it out, but I wanna make sure that I get exactly 12 squares, even if I have a little bit of pastry left over. But then I have uses for that leftover pastry too. So not to worry. And the trick here is just try to eyeball 12 good squares. And I suggest that you use a knife. Try not to use a pizza cutter. Because if you use a pizza cutter, what you're going to do is basically crimp the edges. And when you crimp the edges, the puff pastry can't, um, can't puff up on the edges. So I recommend that you use a knife using a cutting action so that you don't create those crimps. And you'll end up with nice flaky pastry along your edges. Just a little tip. And then you want to form them into this muffin pan like this. Yes, you want the corners to stick out the way they do. More importantly, you want to make sure that where they don't stick out, it comes up to the edge of the muffin, the, the tin itself, I should say. And press it in very gently, okay? And when you're done with that, drop it in a meatball. And look at that. It's like they were made for it. They fit perfectly. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? All right, you're gonna to wanna to pop these in the oven at 425 degrees for at least 15 minutes. Check them to make sure they don't burn, but once they're brown like that, take them out of the oven and put them on a wire rack to cool. And now we top them off with that beautiful gravy. Oh yeah, do you see how it thickened up? That's exactly how we wanted it to be. So I hope you do give this recipe a try because they really are delicious. And I hope that you come back each week for more great videos made for people who like to cook. Until then, bon appetit.